Work. Work. Greetings folks and welcome to the Death Cuisine live launch party. Tonight I am joined by five of my fellow authors from this year combination cookbook and anthology. Uh, before we start, if you're watching on YouTube, hit like and subscribe and that bell thingy for Bob um, to keep up to date with things. Um, <laughs> sorry, silliness has already ensued, so I'm trying to get a grip, trying to get a grip here. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so tonight we're going to have some live readings, we're going to have some banter, and if you want to be in, a sh in with a shout of winning uh, an ebook, uh, all you've got to do, uh, I have the ebooks in Mobi, EPUB, and PDF. All you have to do is comment, feed me. Uh, you can feed me Seymour if you like, or whatever. You know, you've got to love that big plant. Um, so yeah, that's all you have to do to get involved in the prize draw is ask me to feed you. Uh, yes, uh, Death Cuisine is out now from Breaking Rules Europe. This is them. Uh, like I say, there's links below and links where you can actually get hold of the book. Uh, if you if um, tonight I've got five guests, uh, the rest of the authors, uh, we've been putting together a little package behind the scenes, and uh, that I will be premiering that on Sunday night at nine o'clock GT uh, Greenwich Mean Time, so British time at nine o'clock uh, and that's got the other writers and excerpts and bits and bobs and if you do tune in to watch it uh stay tuned right to the end because i was having a brain fail day yesterday so there so there's a load of cock ups so there is a blooper reel at the end um, that was one of them days man one of them days right so without further ado uh i'm going to bring on my first guest all the way from the netherlands uh, but, but, but before I do, before I do, now, I was contacted last night by the ghost of Mary Whitehouse, and she told me that I had to warn you all that I had to do this. Work. What on earth are you implying? <laughs> <laughs> I'm ever so much, mate. What are you on about? <laughs> hey, Hello, <laughs> matey. How are you doing? Hello, my deario. <laughs> Hello. How are you doing? Fabulous. Bit nervous about the reading, but looking forward to all the gossipy campness afterwards. <laughs> oh, yeah. Which, of which there will probably be an abundance of. Too much for most yeah, people's probably. tastes. <laughs> Well, they can turn off, can't they? <laughs> <laughs> Loving the bar, don't say that. Don't say that. Oh, yeah, true. They're all going. <laughs> yeah. Come back. Come back. <laughs> yeah. Loving the hair, mate. That's looking good. Yeah. Well, I saw everyone else was getting dragged up, so I just came as um, the cedar Chucky all grown up. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I like it. I like it. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, cool. So, yeah, uh, first off, uh, what I mean, you are one of the, the reasons we, well, um, when I first started talking about this, it was with you and another one of the guests, Mr. Mr. Healy, uh, which is why we, I ended up doing it, <laughs> because yeah. we were talking about it. It was just like, we've got to do it now. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. yeah so I think you, you were talking to Keisto when I was editing the um, past the hours, and then I yeah. just started mithering you then. I don't think I was ever really invited. I just kind of <laughs> shook myself in. I was like, there's no way you're doing this if I'm not in it. And yeah. you are doing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're doing it. We're doing it. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, I mean, you're... Um, you've got two stories in it uh one of them was because like uh we had uh, somebody had to had to drop out uh, uh so we had to fill some space so both you and i put little bits and bobs in uh but your main story it's uh it's quite near and dear to you isn't it yeah definitely yeah i've, I've been wanting to do one set in vladinger where i live for mm. forever really or even any dutch ones until um just before this i did um uh breaking rules um lost lore and legends oh yes i think a few of them i'd, I'd picked up on old dutch legends and stuff but still nothing for vlading and so i was like oh i've got to do one for that so and obviously like one of the best things about this i always post about it on facebook is like the mad fogs we get the kind of silent hill fogs yes thought, yeah, you know, i love it yeah. <laughs> fogs. It, it was just made wasn't it it was just had to go <laughs> It was it was when you posted a video. It, it was like um because your building or one of the buildings they stressed the the alarms or something. Yeah, this, really close. And there was yeah. a fog, and it was just like Silent Hill. <laughs> it's creepy as hell, isn't it? You, yeah. you forget as well. It's like once every month, but you completely forget about it, and then they go off, and you're like, oh, ooh. <laughs> pyramid head outside my flat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Cool. Yeah, so are you going to give us a little bit of a reading then, matey? You got straight in now, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okie dokie. Okie dokie, yeah. And then you can chill out then. Yeah. yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, I can't wait for the good camp bit later where it's just a load of gossipy old, old, old guests. <laughs> 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 this is the hard bit. Yeah, yeah. We have to concentrate. Right, yeah, no, yeah. All right, mate, uh, just give me a nod when you're done. Okie dokie. <coughs> Reclaimed, this is called. Femke Snake sat next to the window listening to the town crier's bell ringing. The bell was letting people know that the fresh fish was arriving on the market. For the first year after her husband's boat and crew had failed to return, she would sit at the dock hoping to see their vessel slicing through the fog that often sat over the water. People who always used to say that when they'd lost a loved one, they could feel the presence around them all of the time. Femke had never had that feeling. Many women who had lost their husbands to the sea didn't encounter that strange satisfaction. Those men were lost, reclaimed by the water that the people of the Netherlands frantically reclaimed the land from. The people of Vladinger lived off the water. The sea was the source of their income, their food and their pride. Known as herringkoppen, herring heads by those around them for the slippy, slippery vinegary treats they would often let slide down their throats. The first year was spent holding on to the hope that her husband would return with tales of his travels. But eventually Femke had to accept that the water had no intention of returning him. Back then, one day she'd received a strange visitor at her door who convinced her that her husband was gone from her forever. It was two years ago now a year after her husband had been expected to return and she'd heard a gentle, respectful tapping at the door to her home. She'd opened it to see one of the local fishermen holding his hat next to his chest and a small box in his other hand. His face looked pale and grey. His head stayed lowered as he mumbled his story to the grieving widow. He told her of the horrifying moment he'd split open a fish with his knife and a human finger had slithered out from its stinking guts. She didn't need him to tell her more. She knew exactly where this story was going, but she allowed him to finish his tale. The finger had been wearing her husband's simple wedding band. They'd taken the ring off to see that their initials had been engraved inside. Her husband would never have worn his, his ring when working on the boat. Fishing was a dangerous profession. Wearing a ring on the boat could easily lead to, to having a man having his finger caught and ripped off. She imagined him knowing that he was going to die and slipping on the ring in the hope that his body would someday find its way home to his wife. His body hadn't come home, 
but this small part of him had. She took the box from the man, with the meagre remains of her husband and her marriage. And I think it's probably best to stop there for that one. <laughs> Lovely. Lovely. Love it, mate. Love it. I, lo I love that bit about the fish. <laughs> <There's something laughs> about that. I just like it's nasty. I like it. <laughs> yeah, I thought the idea was a bit hokey, a bit cheap, to be honest. But then it was kind of like, well, she has to have some part of him back, but he also has to be lost at sea. So. <laughs> Let it be a finger than some other appendage, eh, mate? Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you would think of that, would you? <laughs> oh, I would indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Green is here and he says, Good job, matey. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Winters, nicely done. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, and uh, up here, we had. Oh, the husband. Oh, you know that person. Yeah. Nice. Oh, no, I'm um, further up here. We've had quite a few comments already. Uh, we've already had one of these from Kurt. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's come to the right place. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There, there was one, um, there, I, I, there was a comment from him. I spotted him. I've lost it now, but uh, uh, where is it? Oh, there you go. There you go. Tim stuck his bits and bobs in. Who heard? <laughs> yeah, I was worrying you were going to bring me on earlier just after saying, oh, yeah, ask me to feed you. I thought, oh, no, please, Tim. Don't bring me on just yet. But then you did the camp warning anyway, so it was all right. <laughs> well, you mentioned it in the group chat the other day. It was like, I, have ooh, ooh, I have to do it now. <laughs> excellent matey nice one yeah you did a great job learned, and uh, i love that i love that bloody story and yeah you, your other story uh that you had in it lunch break i had the mm. pleasure of narrating that a while ago uh and we've just re-released it haven't we uh yeah i mean i didn't want to read that because you did it so well the first time but perfect <laughs> delivery you know that you know that line i know the line <laughs> it lived or died on that line did it really that story. <laughs> didn't it and i just it thought it come out right if you do it, go camp. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> well, I don't know if you noticed, but I was channeling my inner Hattie Jakes with the with the the, the dinner lady character. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was trying to channel, in there. channel my inner Hattie Jakes, <laughs> <laughs> which is always nice worth doing if you can. <laughs> oh, why? <laughs> nice one, mate. Uh, I'll bring, take you off, and I'll bring you back on in a moment. See you later. Here's one. Nice one, yeah. Um, like I say, if you want to be in, involved in the prize draw, just feed me. There we go. Uh, our next guest is go running on fumes and coffee alone. Uh, don't worry if she has matchsticks holding out her eyes. It is 7 a.m. where she is, which is in Australia. Uh, it's uh, a familiar face to many of you. It's Dean Cohen. Hi! I, I have a, a, a fun little mug of coffee, I'll... I'll, I'll <laughs> through. Yeah, 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 yeah. And your your coffee cup's got tentacles on it. It does. What's not to like? Exactly. What is not to like? <laughs> what is not to like? Right. Yeah. So how's it going then? It's it's good. It's early <laughs> on a Saturday morning. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. You know, for you, Tim. For you tim <laughs> yeah thank you i much appreciate it. like i say what we'll have to do is we'll have to do a, an after hours well i'll get up early and you can get <laughs> we'll, we'll turn the tables <laughs> i'll be the one sitting there going uh, what hello <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll try to be articulate but you know there's just no promises <laughs> i think just turn it up is good enough <laughs> to be honest <laughs> You know, you don't get me doing daft things like going on videos at seven in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, so when I approached you about this, what were your first thoughts? Um, holy hell, I get to, <laughs> like, work with Tim. Mm -hmm. Because I did. I loved your stories, and I was like, ooh. And then the whole cookbook thing, I'm like, I don't cook. What the hell is this shit about? Really? Um, and then I mulled it because, you know, it was like, you know what? That's the best challenge. This will be great. Yeah. Um, so then I went through, um, I accepted, obviously. And then I went through all my old cookbooks when I used to cook before I became mum and 
cooking is far too much effort. Um, and yeah, I found one of my favorite recipes and it kind of culminated in um, actually having um, a bit of a scare for not having my anaphylaxis pen with me. Yes. So I have, that, ana I have, a, I have anaphylaxis as well. So yeah, it's fun, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yep. So I thought, how can I combine this? Because that would be really, t it's terrifying. So I sort of combined the two and, yeah, yeah. ended up with the buzz in the neighbourhood. <laughs> yeah. Which I, I just fell in love with it. I thought it was oh, great. <laughs> I, really liked it. <laughs> I was so nervous sending it off. I was like, oh, God, I hope this is kind of what he wants, what he means. And your yeah, feedback yeah. I was like, Whew, yes, I can breathe again. It was great. <laughs> Well, one of the things I was happiest about with this it was that how different everybody's stories were. There was such a variety of things and stuff. And I basically said, just it'd be as weird and wacky as you like. Just because you're know, me, in it. Just go, just be, <laughs> you know, go for it, man. <laughs> I will be. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, um, uh, yeah. So I was really pleased that everybody sort of embraced that and ran with it because we've got some, we've got some absolute. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> once I would never have predicted, you know. That's so cool. Yeah, th that's the that's the best thing when you're on one of these projects to get yeah. something that that gen genuinely surprises you. You know, it's just like yeah, weren't expecting that. No, weren't expecting that. <laughs> wasn't expecting that. <laughs> you know, so yeah, it's good. And I think the reader, because I mean, there is a, such a wide range of stuff in it. There's something, for, you know, there's something for everybody. everyone. Everyone, it's brilliant. You know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. So yeah, what was it? So um, yeah, uh, so so that came first. Then the uh, the the dish. Yes, the dish came first because I thought I can write something scary, and that's fine. But if it's got to be focused around a dish, I'm like, I haven't cooked anything that's taken longer than twenty minutes in so long. <laughs> but I wanted it to be something that my character would spend time and effort and energy on so when i found um it was a dish i used to make all the time and it was actually really fun to make it again because i made it again for the photos and um just to kind of get that feel again of the order of how how she would make it and all that yeah. stuff and it was really fun getting into it again so yes and yeah, and it, it seemed appropriate because it is a vegetarian meal. Yep. Um, yep. Yeah, so it seemed like, yeah, that, that would be okay. She would cook that. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it came out really well um, because you. that was another thing I wanted as well. I wanted, you know, I, did, I wanted vegetarian stuff. Uh, Simone did some vegan stuff. And, uh, and, and basically we've got, like, world cuisine going on here. That's so cool. <laughs> I know. It's like some of the dishes are like, you know, really sort of adventurous stuff, which is great. Because, uh, you know, again, it's what I wanted. <laughs> your little helpers <laughs> come to say hello. Right? <laughs> as long yeah. as you don't turn your computer off again. <laughs> Pardon? As long as he doesn't turn the, turn the thing well, off. Well, yes, right. <laughs> yes. My little mascot. Say hello. Yeah. yeah. My little mascot here um, when we first set up she decided to um type and actually kicked me off the stream so let's hope she just keeps it forced to herself <laughs> yeah i thought it was me i thought i'd done it I was no like, oh, no no it was, it was her she's a rat bag <laughs> That was after I'd kept Lindsay like sitting behind the screen for about <laughs> fifteen minutes because I didn't realise that the the the, co the the guest list scrolled. <laughs> oh my dear fellow techno reject! I love oh, it. Oh, technology, man, technology. Right, so uh, are you going to give us a little bit of a read then? Uh, yeah. Okay. It probably yeah. won't be as long or intense no, no, as um, Callum's. Have, a, but, have um, a slug of coffee. You'll be all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Bit of fuel. All right. All right. Give us a nod when you're done. All righty. <laughs> hey, guys. So this is called The Buzz in the Neighborhood. I'm just going to read the first two pages. Um, all right. Wrinkling my nose, I force the last of the garlic into submission. I press it against the wooden chopping board with the side of the knife. My warped reflection gleams back at me and a smile pulls at the edges of my lips. Each movement 
the human flesh skin I wear over my true form tears a little more, but just a little longer. I taste the beads of blood at the corners of my mouth. Oh, how I ache to be free. Shh. I hush to the buzz beneath the skin as to a small child woken from a nightmare. The pull and desire to shed its stinking prison grows with each intake of rank breath. The decaying odour rankles inside of me and I cannot understand how humans survive as they do when they cannot smell. They have not smelt it on me yet, but that will be the least of their concerns by the end of the evening. I scrape the crushed garlic into two small ceramic bowls, white, of course. I scoff at the dull light that is fighting its way through the grey clouds that overshadow the backyard. The back wall is a sliding door of glass, as though the view of the flowers of the garden would make up for the sterile whiteness inside. Everything was so pristine. I felt the tear again as, a, as the left side of my top lip sneered in disgust at the space surrounding me. It was suffocating. An open floor plan, that's what they called it. I scoff and I jab the beetroot with a fork. It continues boiling on the stove, not quite soft enough yet. I smile as the stained water bubbles out of the pot and splashes maroon dribbles down the stark white splashback tiles. There were white tiles everywhere in this kitchen and dining room area, large white tiles that hurt this body's heels. The Caesar Stone Island bench is scattered with colours, thanks to the recipe I found in the dead man's cookbook. At least these humans have that going for them. Their food can be incredible. Tonight's will be a last feast to revel in. Bunches of dill overtake, overtake the sharp tang of the garlic, savouring each cut from my knife as it releases more of the smell. My smile stains against the skin. The true smell of green washes over my senses, teasing my true body to buzzing. I breathe deeply as the sound of the bubbling water continues to splash colour over the stove top and wall tiles. Metal presses down on the chopping board as I slice and the rhythm of bubbling water echoes and joins into the music. My hips move back and forth and I lose myself in the dance of my senses. Fuck. And, yep, I think that's a pretty good word to end on. So <laughs> that's all. <laughs> now that's punctuation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> ah, fuck. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Very well done. Yeah. Thank you. I, 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 I yeah, I love all that. <laughs> it's just something about, just something about that, you know, the, the, the sheer contempt your character has for the human race. I approve. Yes. It's, it's, it's like me when I'm in a bad mood. <laughs> well, well, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, she's not really a lover of the humans. <laughs> no, no. And it becomes clear why. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. But yeah. if you want to know why, Indeed. go grab the book. <laughs> go grab the book. There you go. Yeah, we're not going to tell you. Go and get it. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Excellent. Right, you know, uh, I'll take you off and I'll bring you back on in a bit. Thanks, Neen. Thanks. Righty ho. Uh, our next guest uh, is still enjoying Halloween. Uh, she's sulking because a lot of the, the cosplay conventions and things like that have been cancelled. Uh, all the way from Canada, we have Rhiannon Lots. I, I love it. <laughs> Wednesday Thank you Adam very too. much. Oh, yeah. Be yeah. I have been dying to dress up for something. So I did Velma Dinkley for Halloween. And then the second you said you were doing live, I'm like, hey guys, can we can we all wear costumes? So I did. <laughs> Oh, I, I got up a bit. It was fine. Yeah, you, know, I you got up. This is gothic up for me because normally I'm wearing yeah. pastels and like yellow sundresses and shit. So this is as goth <laughs> as I tend to get. It works. It works, man. <laughs> I like it. I thought I it was probably... a good excuse to do it. Yeah, damn right. Damn right. You know, like we were saying before, you don't need an excuse. You know. No, it's true. Fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Every day is my Halloween, so yeah. you know. <laughs> You're living your life the right way. Exactly. This is it. This is it. Um, yeah, and like I was just saying in, to Neen earlier about stories coming completely from the left field and me going, "Whoa, I wasn't expecting that," and it's brilliant. Yours is a brilliant example of this. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Yeah. So. Um, 
but what did you get the idea for it first or did you come up with the, the the idea for the dish first or no the story came first because so when you first invited me to do it yeah i had and horror for me i do sci-fi and fantasy and i was like okay i don't i don't do much in the way of horror but i really like a good slasher film so mm -hmm. i want to do a slasher but not in any sense that we know it uh, <laughs> so i wrote an arthurian slasher set in camelot yes. and i just got to kill off the entire fucking round table uh, <laughs> and then the dish came from that so i wanted to murder a bunch of knights and then i had to add food to that afterwards <laughs> There's a there's a scene in particular that I just love. It's the Merlin scene. I knew you were gonna say that one. <laughs> I love that scene. <laughs> it's just, yeah. I wanted to go a little, a little twisted with it because you never kill Merlin. No. If you're gonna kill do it, Merlin. Do it. Yeah, if you're gonna do it, do it in style. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Screw that old guy. Get yeah. out of here. <laughs> Yeah, so you came into this uh, sort of late because uh, I I had you on an after hours, uh, yes. and uh, just after some uh, had somebody who couldn't couldn't do it because of other commitments or something. So it was like, oh, I know exactly who I'm going to ask. <laughs> I was so glad you did too because you were telling me about it, and I went, yeah. oh man, that's freaking amazing, and yeah, I want to do that. Like, so we spent like 20 minutes talking about pizza or something. Pizza and food yeah. and more yeah. food and all the food. And then you told me about the project, and I was like, "Shit, that's incredible!" And then I don't—I don't think it was even two days later. You messaged me, and you were like, "Hey, so yeah, yeah. Out, do you yeah. want to do this?" Uh, yes. Yeah, excellent. I'm, I'm glad you did because it's a—it's a bloody brilliant story. <laughs> I'm really, really happy with it, and the rest of the stories too are incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's uh, together well, so well. Really impressed with everybody's contributions it's all yeah. the and it was what like, it came together without any real any pain <laughs> it was very no. painless. It was just the pain happen. is from amazon as we've been trying oh. to get the paperbacks oh. out because i'm yeah. sorry to anyone in canada even i don't have a copy yet because amazon wants us to spend sixty dollars right That's now a, and it's not sixty dollars i promise uh, yeah no it won't be but, <laughs> it yeah won't eventually be it will not yeah. be sixty dollars uh, that being said feel free to spend sixty dollars yeah, right now, if you are that eager for a copy, please, by all means. <laughs> yeah, no, because uh, we we had problems over here as well. It was it was something like fifty quid when it first went online. Yeah. It was just like, what? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't I don't know why. I don't know. Yeah, Amazon have moments, and for some reason they've chosen this book to be one of those moments where they're stunningly bad. It's too <laughs> powerful. They're yeah. like you got your book is too powerful. We have to curb this because yeah, we might destroy it. the world. <laughs> we might unleash some sort of being into the world Cthulhu. through this book, and they know it exactly. Yeah. They know Cthulhu. it. So, <laughs> so my, my you know my ambition is to release Cthulhu through food or something. <laughs> yeah, food, I've actually, I have done a story. Yeah, yeah accidental have. Latin just spewed around the wrong yeah. book. Yeah, yeah, He's there coming. you go. Yeah, yeah. He's coming for go. us. Yeah, yeah. I have summoned to soggy were using a pie in one of my stories. So, it, it was, you know. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. Do you want to give us a little bit of a reading? And uh, Absolutely. Yeah. And give me a shout when you're ready. All right. So, I'm not starting at the beginning of my story. We're starting a little bit in the middle, and I apologize for the fact that I've chosen a rather long excerpt for you. But this is Long May She Reign. King Arthur was interrupted by a wild boom of thunder. It clapped so hard the king's teeth slammed together and the dinnerware on the tables rattled. A rush of gasps and giggles rose skyward, and then the wooden shutters, closed tightly against the raging storm, blew inwards, flying clean off their hinges. Arthur ducked reflexively, as did the other knights around his table. Howling wind rushed into the room, screaming with the same vehemence as terrified revelers. It snuffed the torches and candles that bathed the hall in their warm glow. Even the fires burning in two monstrous fireplaces banked to flickering embers. The throne room plunged into darkness and chaos, scattered bolts of lightning the only illumination. Between flashes, carnage reigned. The half-dozen heavy shutters that blew into the room, followed by a ha hailstorm of glass, had obliterated the servants edging the walls of the hall and battered several tables of feasters. Those still alive were wreathed in agonized moans that sparred with the thunder and wind for dominance. 
Pools of blood, slick and black in the vibrance of the lightning, spread across the flagstone floors. One roast boar, flesh mostly uneaten, was swathed in a suit of knife-like glass. An eager reveler, his hand still outstretched for the boar, was riddled with glass as well. A lardis cleaned through his cheek. Arthur could see flickers of glass shine when the courtier opened and closed his mouth, still frantically chewing on a shred of boar meat. He slowly keeled over sideways and splayed on the floor, motionless. The howling gales whipped a whirlwind of odors at Arthur. Savory meat and vegetables, yeasty bread, sweat, the unmistakable dampness of the storm, and a bittersweet aroma, like burnt hazelnuts, that Arthur recognized immediately. It was the scent of magic. He gingerly stood from where he crouched on the floor, half sheltered by the legendary round table, and faced Merlin. The magician remained calmly upright in his seat. Merlin, explain this, Arthur ordered. Castelli Brennan was warded against all magic but Merlin's. If the king could smell magic, it had to have come from the old sorcerer. Merlin remained silent, stoic. Merlin, Arthur demanded again, drawing Excalibur from the sheath he had slung across the back of his chair before the feast began. The silver blade flashed in the lightning, but Merlin still said nothing. I'm afraid he can't answer you, a husky female voice replied in his stead. Arthur spun around, lifting Excalibur defensively. At the same time, the torches sprang back to life. Flames roared three feet in the air before settling into sleepy, romantic flickers. Though the storm continued raging, thunder trying to shake down the castle walls, the wind swept from the room. The air suddenly felt thin but oppressive at the same time. An unexpected sight greeted Arthur when he rooted his feet again. An unfamiliar woman. She wasn't in attendance at the feast a moment ago. Arthur certainly would have noticed if she was draped languorously over his throne. She wore a rich black gown threaded with silver that glimmered in the torchlight. It was fine enough for the grandest of queens. In fact, his own Queen Guinevere didn't wear anything so luxurious. The woman's lips were painted bright scarlet and black coal swept along lashes that curtained piercing gray-blue eyes. Her dark hair, a chestnut brown so deep it bordered on black, was unbound and spilled over her shoulders. A single swatch of gray shot it through where it parted to the right of her forehead. Despite the gray strands, the woman otherwise looked as though she was in her early twenties. My dear Arthur, I wouldn't have a conversation with you if you're going to gawp like that, the woman chided. Though her tone teased, her gaze cut. Aware he looked like a buffoon, Arthur snapped his mouth shut and straightened, readjusting his grasp on Excalibur. Explain yourself, he ordered, hoping for an answer from her if Merlin wouldn't give one. The scent of magic thickly perfum perfumed the air around her. How did you get in here? With help from your pet, of course. She waved towards Merlin. The king half turned, waiting for the sorcerer to deny the outrageous claims. But instead of an outraged old man, or even one trembling with guilt, a corpse sat in Merlin's place, and not a fresh one. Where Merlin drank and ate mere moments ago, a rotting, thickly juicy cadaver slouched in the wooden chair. Flesh, slowly liquefying on lifeless bones, hung loose from the body's face. As Arthur watched, a slab of it slipped off the skull, grimy from the juices of putrefaction, and caught in the limp, gray strands of hair that remained attached to the remnants of Merlin's chin. A dull, shriveled eye followed in due course, bringing a rainfall of maggots with it. The stench hit Arthur a moment later, and he keeled over and vomited a torrent onto the flagstone floor. How, he rasped, straightening as soon as he was able, willing away the embarrassed blush that clawed up his cheeks. The woman arched off Archer's throne, Arthur's throne, sinuously easing to her feet. She didn't answer right away. Instead, she prowled, cat-like, to one of the banquet tables nearby. The lords and ladies gathered around it flinched as she drew near. A few scampered away, and one lord, too drunk to make a clean escape, merely pushed himself backwards off the bench he perched on, his back slamming painfully against the stone floor. He yelped, then clamped his mouth shut, trying to avoid the woman's attention. She daintily picked up a decadent cherry tart and bit into it. Oh, Arthur, the woman crooned, my compliments to the chef. This is absolutely delicious. As her teeth sank through the soft fruit, it disintegrated. The crimson filling liquefied and turned to blood. The crisp pastry shell collapsed into itself and became muddy sludge. Hellish stains marred her alabaster chin, and a fresh waft of magic flooded the room. Everyone cringed in terror at the display of dark magic. 
Did you think that your sorcerer was celibate? The woman finally asked the room at large. She directed her attention back at Arthur, flinging the rest of the tart aside. It exploded wetly on the floor in a heap of mud and blood. Her eyes were expectant, the question not rhetorical. I... She immediately cut him off. No, you didn't think about your sorcerer at all, unless you were considering how he could benefit you. But one crook of my finger, and he came running, so eager for a taste of pleasure with one of his own kind, now that your crusade against magical beings ensures no human will come near us. I lifted my hem merely to my knees, and the promise of more to come was enough for him to sing out the warding spells used on your lovely castle here. Her voice took on a lilting, sing-song tone, and then I slipped a dagger between his ribs, used a simple reanimation spell, a temporary one, mind you, and shipped him off back here to unknit your wards from the inside. She clapped between her sentences, punctuating each statement. Merlin would never, Arthur began. Once a traitor, always a traitor. The woman cut him off again, glacial. He betrayed his own kind, fairy kind, my kind. It's not a stretch to imagine he'd betray you now that you've revealed your genocidal intent for us. Arthur finally managed to squeeze out a full sentence. It's not a betrayal to fight for goodness against evil and the extermination of black magic. Despite his quaking knees, Arthur's tone was righteous, heroic even, fit for the king of Camelot. There is no such thing as black magic the woman hissed there is only magic but i suppose you would consider it evil if not used directly to your benefit the only evil i recognize is that in the hearts of you and your knights who just today slaughtered an entire village of innocent fairy kind and rewarded yourselves with a feast is that why you're here arthur demanded deluded vengeance for a single village of demons a laugh danced from the woman's lips the sound skittered unpleasantly along arthur's spine you mistake my intentions if you think I'm here because of a single village, my dear Arthur. I'm here for your head and for your sword, so that I might rule Camelot and do to your people what you are doing to mine. Arthur battled her laugh with one of his own, a deep chuckle that shook him heartily. You are one woman against a room of 100 people and the entirety of my round table. Even with your foul magic, you will never take this sword from me. As if his words were a call to action, the knights gathered behind him and sheathed their own swords, bristling at the witch. She pouted. One woman, she parroted. Don't tell me you don't recognize me. I'm not in the habit of keeping company with witches, Arthur retorted, but suddenly a sinking feeling yawned open in the pit of his stomach. In that case, allow me to introduce myself. I'm Morgan Le Fay. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> it's funny that I actually mentioned that scene. <laughs> yeah. It was, so <laughs> it was my to favorite too. Yeah, so. yeah you, you did a good poker face there of not giving it away that you were going to do it. I just love that. Like Merlin dissolving. It's the bit of his eye falling out. It's yeah, like, and the yeah. maggots come after it. <laughs> yeah, maggots, yeah. yeah. You've got to the work, Especially, so. you know, I was just eating, guys. Like, the rest of the feasters were like, did we Did we have to go here? You know, I was enjoying my feast. You have to shower <laughs> maggots off of Merlin. Come on. Come on, guys. <laughs> They're sick of the rest of the shit that the round table constantly does. They just wanted a nice, calm feast. Yeah, no, yeah. Mar yeah. Merlin's over here liquefying in his own death juices. <laughs> there you go <laughs> yeah and uh, and, it, and it, it just goes from there <laughs> yeah it doesn't get better the calm before the storm that bit <laughs> yeah and then i proceed to kill everybody yeah it is basically Spoiler. a massacre a complete and total yeah. massacre and i fully approve <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> thank you that was absolutely brilliant yeah uh, thank you yeah chris you is this great read poor merlin <laughs> <laughs> An entree to others. An entree to others. You're not I wrong. Like You're not I like wrong. it. I like it. Excellent. Yeah. So uh, I'll just take you off and then bring you back on in a bit. Thanks for that, Rihanna. Nice one. Sounds good. Uh, yeah, I've noticed there's a few people just joined us. Uh, if you are late to the party and you want to be in with a shout of getting uh, a free ebook, I have it in Moby, EPUB, and PDF. Uh, all you have to do is comment with the phrase feed me there you go righty ho uh for my next guest 
<laughs> Brace yourselves, folks. <laughs> I understand he's going to be on his best behaviour tonight. <laughs> he's also wearing some rather funky goggles. Uh, all the way from the States, <laughs> it's Keisto Healy. <laughs> Hello. Thank you. <laughs> How are you doing, man? <laughs> uh, I, I'm doing well, though my best behavior is not often great. So No, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sober, so that's something. Right? It's a big improvement on last time. Then. <laughs> oh, my God. I swear, like, I'm just never going to live that down. It's just No, you're not. Not, gonna... not, as, not as long as I'm around, you're not. <laughs> Well, thank you. That's sweet of you. <laughs> That's what I'm for. That's what, what, what you know, what I'm pals for. To remind you. <laughs> remind you oh, of those. Oh, Michelle, things. come on. What? It's definitely <laughs> I, I not my please. worst behavior. Nah. <laughs> please not. <laughs> please no. God. <laughs> Y'all haven't seen my worst behavior. I'm not even I heard good somebody, I, I heard you were pretty bad that fir after that first after hours when you fell over and broke a table lamp or something. I bro I broke a rib. <laughs> I literally I literally did. I broke a rib. Yeah. <laughs> nice. It was uh <laughs> it's not my finest moment. No, no. <laughs> For sure. But that's where we, we first got talking about this. <laughs> look, look, at, look at Callum's <laughs> Robert Hoffman. Release the beast. Release the kraken. <laughs> Release the beast. <laughs> Be careful what you wish for, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we, we first got talking about this on an After Hours interview. Uh, yeah, so I remember that oh, part. Yeah, so, yeah, so it was quite early. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so um, when I when I came to you about it, like properly, uh, what did you have in your? Did you already have a meal idea in your head, or did you have the story I think first? I, I definitely, I mean, I definitely wanted to do something um, vegan, mm -hmm. uh, just because making like really good vegan food is is actually quite difficult, <laughs> and. Oh, yeah. uh, and I, it's not something everyone uh, everyone does. So I like I definitely want to go that route. Like I was contemplating even gluten free, but that's even harder. Like I, oof. <laughs> as a chef, let me tell you, I know. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. Gluten, but gluten I did. I actually, I, I don't remember <laughs> if I said it to you in that. I mean, I don't remember a lot of that. <laughs> but, um. I, I think I definitely at some point mentioned uh, the meal before I even had a story around the meal, and uh, and yeah, I, I think you, I, I think you I think you, uh, you cooked it or you were on about going to cook it and I think you sent me pictures of it or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I definitely ha had um, the meal planned before I had the story planned for sure. Um, but <laughs> David, you don't need that. <laughs> That's just you. I love you. <laughs> there you go, Sarah. All right. Oh, God, I'm done. <laughs> Michelle. What? Michelle's picking on me today. I love you. No, anyway. no, she says vegan sounds terrible. It sounds super terrifying. I know. <laughs> that means uh, like vegan food sounds terrifying. Try it. Try the recipe. Get the book. Try the recipe. <laughs> but um, what, one of the things that's that's interesting. <laughs> Damn it, David. <laughs> um. Yeah. When when Callum was talking earlier, um, it, it was interesting to me because um, this is actually uh, it's only the second story I've ever written. That <laughs> man, this chat is killing me. Um, <laughs> it's only the second story I've ever written that takes place in the town where I live, and this yeah. is the first one that I actually wrote that <laughs> thanks david um that 
<laughs> that really shows the town. The first yes. one I wrote was very specific in, in just uh, like a, a specific haunt of the town. Didn't really get into Asheville at all. But this story, I feel like Asheville is actually a character in the story. And uh, yeah. I, it's something I've been wanting to do for a long time. And uh, I was really excited to, to actually do that. So it's funny that, that he did the same thing, that we both, you know, chose this book to, like, really delve into our home towns. Yeah. <laughs> what? Why is oh, it? No. Oh. It's just David. <laughs> oh. Yeah. The funny thing is, he mentions a nightclub. I went. I, I used to get at that when I was about fifteen. <laughs> it was the nightclub in the area that you could go to if wait, you were, wait. when you were underage. It, he said the Smiths nightclub. Is that is that like the Smiths the band, like Morrissey or? No, 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 yeah. no. It was Mr. Smiths. It was just a dodgy uh, nightclub that you could get into if you were underage. <laughs> oh wow! Okay. <laughs> If it wasn't him, he's having some severe flashbacks. <laughs> Lindsay. <laughs> nice. Right, righto then, matey. Are you going to give us a bit of a reading then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to also uh, start from the middle of the story. Yeah. So um, I'm going to try to give uh, just a quick um, backstory uh, so it makes a little bit more sense. Um. The story is about uh, a guy named Jackson who uh, used to be a cop. Now he's a private detective, and his he's trying to find out what happened to his brother, who uh, was a food critic who came to Asheville and um, <laughs> and um, did one job at a vegan restaurant and uh, was never seen or heard from again. And he has his own theories about the chef, um, Abigail Boston. And, um, and at this point in the story, he's, he's made, uh, one friend, uh, kind of a date, uh, named Chasey. And he's supposed to meet her later to go to dinner at the restaurant in question. And uh, he's coming out of lunch, and he sees Abigail Boston. Uh, and here we go. Jackson didn't want to waste an opportunity, so he quickened his step and ended up almost colliding with her. Sorry, he said with a smile. No harm, no foul she said, giving him a smile of her own that didn't make it to her eyes. Do you know any good places for lunch around here? I'm from out of town, he said, hoping that she hadn't just seen him come out of the restaurant. What kind of food are you looking for? I'll bet you I have something at my restaurant. Somehow her smile grew even more sinister. Oh, wow, you have a restaurant, Jackson beamed trying his best to seem authentically excited. That's fantastic. I always wanted to open one. So what kind of food? Name it. Oh, Jackson thought to himself. He knew he didn't have time to ponder, so he just thought of the bar from the night before. It was the first thing that came to mind. Irish. Hmm, she said, as if the choice was, not, was unexpected. I have a vegan shepherd's pie that is to die for. You should definitely come grab a slice. Jackson smiled and thanked her before walking past her. But in his head, he was thinking, to die for, I bet. Jackson wanted to just grab the woman and shake her and demand to know what she did to his brother. But he knew in his heart that it wouldn't gain him any answers. But it would attract a lot of unwanted attention on the crowded Asheville city streets. After he heard her walking the opposite direction for a bit, he stopped walking himself and turned back to follow her. After three blocks, she came to a complete stop and just stood there with her back to him. Jackson studied her, waiting to see what she was going to do. She started walking again, so he did the same. 
Then she stopped and whirled around. Can I help you with anything else? She said harshly. How did she know I was there? It was the same when I was in my car. It's like she can sense me. Jackson gave his best friendly smile, added a chuckle for good measure, and waved. Yes, I'm sorry. I can't eat at your restaurant. I don't know where it is. Abigail pointed upwards towards the sign above her. It read, Where it all began. Jackson clapped his hands and laughed. <laughs> right here, apparently. Fantastic. Maybe I'll come back for dinner. Do you know where Pritchett Park is? I'm supposed to meet someone there. Jackson listened with feigned interest as Abigail rattled off directions. Do I know you? She asked him then, her eyes scrutinizing him like she was combing through a catalog. You look strangely familiar. Jackson gave a genuine smile this time. Oh, you probably just know my brother. He's sort of famous. A blood-red fingernail brushed over her equally red lips. Oh, you don't say. Who is your famous brother, may I ask? Jackson's smile returned. He felt a bizarre sense of pride in this moment. His name is Joey D'Amico. He has a column in the New York Daily Gazette. He does nationwide and sometimes worldwide restaurant reviews. I'm sure you know who he is. I can't say I do, she said, but her eyes told a different story. Have a good day. Come back for dinner later. Try that shepherd's pie. With that, she spun on her stiletto heels and marched into the restaurant. I will, Jackson called behind her, almost laughing, but without any humor. Guilty, he thought. You're going down, Ms. Boston, tonight. Jackson found out that Abigail's directions were actually quite good, as he found the park easily. He also frowned when he found the type of people that frequented it. The place was full of some of the seediest characters he had come across since arriving in Asheville. He had felt safer in the dominatrix dungeon. The characters that surrounded him now were either on drugs or selling drugs. Some of them were yelling at passersby or even lunging at them. Several fights came a hair's width from breaking out right there in front of him. He checked the time, and it was almost six. He didn't want to leave and miss Chasey. Why did she have to pick this place of all places? A thin man in a deer stalker with a wrapped t-shirt, dirty jeans, and galoshes approached him. Jackson sighed and tried not to make on co eye contact. You driving? I need a ride, the man said. No, Jackson said back plainly. Not driving. You're a fucking liar, the man screamed, spittle showering Jackson's face and sticking in his beard. Fucking disgusting. Jackson snarled and turned back to him. Your shirt is cool, but spitting in my face isn't. Walk away now, or swallow your last remaining teeth. The stranger snarled back and jammed an index finger into Jackson's chest. It was quickly grabbed and bent backwards until there was a loud crack. The crying man grabbed his hand and fell to the ground, and then Jackson walked to the other side of the park to avoid attention. When he got there, he found himself facing Chasey and said, Oh, thank God. Aw, that's sweet, she said to him. You ready? More than you could possibly know. Jackson followed her out of the park and they began to walk towards the restaurant. Why would you pick that park? That's the worst of the worst, he asked as they strolled along, hand in hand. I don't know. They don't bother me. I guess you get used to them after a while. It's just a big, easy landmark. I kind of hate this town. Chasey shrugged her shoulders. We all do, and we also love it. Fucked up, isn't it? Very. He told Chasey about his run-in with Abigail and how she reacted at the mention of his brother. Chasey found that really interesting if her hugely widened eyes were any indication. When they arrived, the restaurant was complete, completely packed, and there was a line that went out outside and around the building. It hadn't been like that earlier, 
and Jackson frowned. Maybe we should have made a reservation. Maybe. We can at least make them for tomorrow while we're here, Chasey told him. She pushed through the crowd to the hostess at the podium and asked, How long is the wait? Are you with him? The hostess asked, pointing a thumb at Jackson. Chasey nodded and looked back at, Jason, at Jackson with another shrug. He put his arms up as if to say, I have no idea. There's no wait for you, the hostess said to Jackson, looking past Chasey as if she didn't even exist. Chef Boston reserved a table for you when you spoke earlier. She's been waiting for you to arrive. Nice. Well done, matey. Yeah, very good. <clears throat> Excellent. Yeah, it's got a um, nice n sort of... <laughs> did, you, did, you see, did you see the comment <laughs> up here? Yeah, it's kind of like a kaleidoscope, man. I feel really like someone did slip me some acid where <laughs> I can't do it. Wow. Yeah, you, didn't, <laughs> you should have tried read it with a wand. <laughs> no. <laughs> Funnily enough, uh, it, funnily enough um, in the, you know, I've been putting together a, a showcase for for the the other authors that i'm going to premiere on the sunday uh drew starling did his reading wearing a michael myers mask nice <laughs> so, yes. it's worth tuning in just it. to see that because i love this it's, group it's man this is a great group <laughs> hearing, hearing drew starling's voice coming out of a michael myers mask is really weird <laughs> cool right matey nice one uh, I'll take you off and I'll bring you back on later. Okie dokie. Righto. Yeah. Um, we will be having a sh very, it'll probably be a very short Q and a at the end, <laughs> at the end of this rate, because we're already getting on for time at the bit, but, um, but we will have a Q and a after the last, well, after my last guest and myself. Um, so if you have any questions, get them down in the comments. Okay. Our last guest from, from sunny Yorkshire. Uh, wearing some rather funky ears right at the moment. So David's certainly going to think some bit in his drink. Uh, it's Lindsay Ellis Holloway. Hi. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> you you got to love it. <laughs> oh, I mean, I, I have been on client calls, you know, as a project manager, when you turn up to client calls with the ears, you, you think <laughs> that I'd be called out for being unprofessional, but it actually makes my client stay. So, you know, it, it, it comes with <laughs> <laughs> nice yeah my partner's got some uh, got earphones that are pixie ears oh nice oh, yeah, yeah 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 <laughs> he's got some big red ladybirds as well <laughs> oh brilliant uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah it's bad enough with these because because uh, i'm like i'm in the eaves essentially of our our three-story house and if i stand up to get something from like my drawers to the side of me i'm forever banging yeah there's actual marks where i've scraped the ears down, <laughs> down the Boy. ceiling the paint is on the tops of the ears and the ears have left marks on the ceiling i'm utterly useless <laughs> nice <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's no denying it i mean i know mr green is going to be like absolutely loving this but yeah utterly yeah he is he's already said put the headphones <laughs> on <you." laughs> he also said oh no when you came on <laughs> I, I, I knew there was going to be at least one comment um there'll be a stop hollowaying me in a minute or something you know i mean he's so tiresome <laughs> well somebody's happy to see you anyway oh, <laughs> I mean, this is what says, Yay, Lindsay. <laughs> oh bless her <laughs> <laughs> oh 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 but well, we're on the subject of funky headgear yeah i i <laughs> yeah I, I'll do that. I would do it. <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm like. If I see anything on Etsy or anything that's remotely tentacle related, it's like, Tim, Tim, look at this. <laughs> First thing I do yeah. is like, must tell Tim, have to show Tim what I found you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You have Every been time. responsible to me buying some random crap. <laughs> so... <laughs> where's, my, where's my camera? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, mine is, is he here? No, he's in, he's in the other room. The beginning wow. of the mood, of course. The yes. mood of us. Yeah, mine's blue and turns purple. Yeah. Yeah. It, I, I liked the tie dye. There was there was a you know, yeah. there was a, a an array of them in the market. And I was like, no, that's a that's a good indicator for whether my husband should come up the stairs given we work from home. 
So it was like, do, 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 does he come up the stairs and speak to me, or does he bring me a cup of tea before he approaches the mad wife that might yeah, be at the top of the stairs? On the moon yeah. yeah. <laughs> to be fair, I often forget to attic. change the moon <laughs> because I'm so pissed off that he doesn't get looked at. <laughs> so no, it's, it's not a good indication. You can usually hear me ranting yeah. from the top of the stairs. So it makes very little difference. <laughs> nice. Yeah. yeah, so when, when I first uh, approached you about this, what, what did you sort of think? Because uh, I know you're a big fan of Japanese food. And that, so, yeah. yeah, you know me. I'm, I'm Japan mad, yeah. really. So yeah. Um, yeah. everyone's well aware of the fact that I, I'm, I'm like the, the Japanese girl stuck in a white girl's body, mm. which has been the running joke in my family for a very, very long time. Um, and it's one of those foods that I, I love the culture. I love everything about them. And the food, sort of learning to cook it at home has been a yeah. passion. So it was, it, it, it was a big passion for me. So when you'd sort of come to me and said, oh, you know, do you have a couple of recipes in mind? It's like, it's the problem for me wasn't going to be, did I have a recipe in mind? It was, which one am I going to narrow it down to? <laughs> I Even then I didn't manage to narrow it down to one. I had to put two in because I couldn't just do the one because these yeah. are the two that uh, my friends and family know me for. So these are the ones that I tend to bring out and do it. You know, when we have guests over, my family love these these dishes. This is, this is my signature sort of Japanese dish um, that's, that I thought was probably the easiest that people, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Jen knows that well too, far too well actually. <laughs> uh, you know, th these were the two dishes that I thought people could do at home. <laughs> that people could do at home because a lot, a lot of Japanese dishes are quite difficult because you need the equipment, you need the the bits and pieces. But these were the two that you can adjust more to the taste and you can sort of fiddle with. And I know that people can get the uh, bits and pieces for. So yeah. <laughs> yeah there, there's a joke there that i'm not going for yeah yeah <laughs> not going there tim not going there yeah, no. i mean it, we all know where we all know the joke and it's all in my head but i ain't going there oh, <laughs> oh no, brilliant not touching that with a 50 foot barge pole it's degenerated into it already. Well, uh, we knew it would. <laughs> yeah, well, we knew it would. Yeah. I'm surprised it hadn't before now, let's be honest. <laughs> We're trying to hold it together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Thank well, the da Dave was doing his best to sort of cause... Derail cause, it. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 derail yeah. it, like, from the beginning, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. So, are you going to give us a little bit of a, little yeah. bit of a reading? So, I'll Excellent. give you a bit of a reading of this. Marvellous. Brilliant. Uh, so, my story, Itadakimas, uh, I'm going to give you an excerpt from um, sort of midway point of my story. It takes place in um, Chatham in Louisiana. Um, it's a little bit of a tribute to um, a friend of mine by the name of Megan, um, who gave me the inspiration for my protagonist, who I apologise now, he's very racist, but you're not meant to like him. In the three weeks since the Oni's feast had opened, it had never once been empty during a mealtime. Once neighbouring towns had heard of the place and its phenomenal feasts, everyone rushed to book tables as soon as the restaurant could accommodate them. In such a short time, they were booked up at least two months in advance, with a few tables kept open for the locals of Chatham at all times. One such local, despite all the odds, was in fact Harold Oldham. Every day, at least once, Harry made the trip to the restaurant, and in fact he knew most, if not all, of the staff by name. Whenever he arrived, despite the queue formed in front of the Tory gate, Kai would wave Harry to the front, escorting Harry to the, straight to the private room he had shared with Martha the first time they had gone. The trip was made a little more difficult these days, considering the pounds Harry had put on eating at the restaurant every day. Not that he cared in the slightest. He wasn't about to turn down a good meal especially not when Kai had offered him a VIP discount for being such a loyal customer. For a Jap, Kai wasn't too bad, though that was mostly because Kai treated Harry like some sort of lord, which perfectly fed Harry's ego. Harry waddled down the street, watery blue piggy eyes fixed on his destination, rolling his hips as he swung his gargantuan belly along, his mouth already salivating at the thought of the ramen with a side of karyagi. Harry's thick, bulbous tongue flickered over his fat lips, his lungs straining with each wheezing breath, 
sweat pouring down his back as he raised a chubby hand to motion to Kai above the crowd blocking his path. Excuse me, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, would you mind stepping aside so that my esteemed guests can come through, please? Arigato gozaimasu, thank you. Kai bowed to the crowd as he ushered them aside to allow Harry passage. Thank you, Kai. Always happy to see you on the door. Harry heaved, his chest rising and falling heavily with exertion. You always know how to treat a man, he grunted, patting his belly as he got his breath back. Always a pleasure to see you, Mr Oldham. I have your table free for you. I take it you'd like your regular order. That's right, with extra pork today, I think. Then I don't have to suffer Martha's cooking this evening. You should have seen the shit she gave me last night. Slop. I wouldn't even feed it to the pigs. Wouldn't even feed it to the gooks, Harry laughed, his belly jiggling as he waddled after Kai. Should have just come back here again, rather spend the money here, rather than force myself to swallow her crap cooking. Well, we're always happy to serve you, Mr Oldham, Kai replied, though he offered no opinion on Mrs Oldham's cooking. A family of four made their way towards them, waddling merrily in Harry's direction, cheeks flushed red from full, bulging bellies. The two children giggled and tottered as quickly as they could along the gravel path cheeks puffing as they struggled for breath, their chubby thighs rubbing together as they chased one another. As they were about to cross Harry's path, a server came from the left, forced to jump aside in an almost cat-like fashion that caused even Harry to be impressed, at least until the waiter jumped into Harry. You fucking jack imbecile, Harry snarled, lashing out at the waiter, backhanding him hard across the face with a chubby hand, propelling the unspe unsuspecting waiter across the floor. Are you all right, Mr Oldham? Kai asked, placing a gentle hand on the man's shoulder. No thanks to this idiot. You should fire him, Kai, useless piece of shit, Harry snarled. Get out of my way, he snapped, barging his way through the family who stood there, stunned, their eyes fixed on a spot just behind Harry's shoulder. As always, all that mattered to Harry Oldham was Harry. Had he thought to see what the family was looking at? Maybe, just maybe he'd have seen what had stunned them so. He would have seen the molten gold gaze of Kai boring into the back of his head as the waiter helped his colleague off the floor and muttered something swiftly in Japanese before sending the young man off into the kitchens. But of course, Harry was too busy with Harry. While Kai lingered behind, Harry made his way to the private room he always used, greeting a few of the members of the Mason Lodge on his journey, stopping to shake hands with a few of them along the way. Ah, Harry, good to see you, old man, Jameson called out, waving from the booth he had somehow managed to shuffle his bloated, toad-like frame into, his stomach pressed up against the table in a way that threatened to cut him in two, not that he seemed to mind or notice. Jameson, how are you? Harry replied, shaking the man's meaty fist with his own. Not too bad, not too bad. You heard about Iris and that old miser Ford? No. What about them? Gone missing. What do you mean, gone missing? I mean what I said. They've gone missing. Sheriff Peters says they're the six ones this week. Apparently there's 20 missing altogether in the last three weeks. From Chatham? Yep. Couple of tourists, too. But Peters says he's not sure about them, because they could have gone home or onto another town anyhow. Mr Oldham, would you like to take your seat and I'll bring your meal? Kai interjected, making Harry jump since he'd forgotten all about the man. Yeah, yeah, good point, Kai. See you later, Jameson, Harry muttered, scowling as Jameson's words went round and round in his head. Twenty people were missing. Even as Harry heaved his portly form into his seat, those words turned over in his mind. Ordinarily, such details wouldn't have bothered a man like Harry. After all, it had nothing to do with him personally. However, even Harry felt this was strange, especially for such a quiet place like Chatham. <laughs> Nice, nice. Uh, uh, yeah, I I really enjoyed reading your story because I couldn't wait for him to get his comeuppance. Yeah, um, <laughs> so he, he's actually like, oh, inspired by, um, and I, I I feel all right saying this because I don't know the man, but by Meg, my friend Megan's grandfather, who was notoriously not particularly pleasant. Um, right. So um, I, I promised her he would meet a very 
unhappy end. And, and I was Rob very disgusting as well. <laughs> yes, and I was very, 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 very happy to oblige in the very, very, very unhappy ending <laughs> that that man reaches. Like I say, I couldn't, I couldn't start at the beginning of that story because there, there's no. more racism than I, I yeah. feel ready to sully my own tongue with. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, no, yeah. I don't, yeah, thought you did really well. That was a good reading, that. Yep, yeah, excellent. Uh, Jennifer says, good job. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. I don't yes. know. What's this reference to? I've missed this one. Monty I've Python, got... uh, Mina oh, the Oh, yes, You know, the big guy that Yeah, explodes. yeah. Do you know yeah, I've yeah, forgotten yeah. all about that? <laughs> I'll take that, Mr. Hewitt. I will take yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, it's a good one, isn't it? <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I like that. I, I will yeah. take that. <laughs> Excellent. Righty ho. Uh, I will uh, bob you off and I'll see you uh, shortly. Right, yes. So uh, that just leaves me. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I, <laughs> yeah, I had the pleasure of putting this together. Uh, it was kind of my baby for a while. Uh, and um, I'm really pleased with everybody's stuff and how it all came together. Uh, so, yeah, the brief, if you haven't already guessed, it was to write a, a horror story that features a dish and then a recipe for that dish. So, yeah, so there you go. So you can read about it. So basically, you know, if you, you know, you read about, say, you know, I don't know, a sausage roll that could destroy the earth, that you could go and cook it and eat it while you read it. That was kind of the, the, the thought behind it. Uh, put your jokes about sausage rolls in the comments. Uh, yeah, so if you have any, if you have any questions, uh, we'll have a little a short Q and A because you know it won't be going on. You know, we'll be here all bloody night at this rate. But um, yeah, so uh, get them down in the comments section. We'll go round round the table in a little bit. Uh, and yeah, you've still got time to enter the prize draw if you already haven't. If you want to enter, I will be doing the the actual draw. Uh, very shortly after I've done my thing. So if you want in on it, that's all you got to do. Just comment that and I'll get you in the octopus pot. Uh, righty ho. So yeah, my story, uh, I've got two stories in it. Um, one of which is quite short and <laughs> quite ridiculous called Feathers of Fear. Uh, and the other one is <clears throat> a story called uh, Speciality of the House. Now I'm going to go, I'm going to start sort of part way through uh, so so far, the the main character, Steve, he's uh, he's basically been driving. He's been driving. He's a salesman. He's been driving back to London from Boss Castle in Cornwall, and he's got lost on Bodmin Moor. Fog's come down. He's found this creepy little village. He's gone in a pub called the Black Goat. There's some weird sort of uncanny valley stuff going on. There's some drunken domino players in the corner. There's people swigging this cider, and he's eaten a, a chicken tarragon and mushroom pasty. Because that was all that they had left. Because the chef had gone home, so it was just bunging in the microwave. We've all been there. We've all been there. We've all had that. Uh, yeah, so there you go. So he's uh, retired to his room after a belly full of this rocket fuel cider. And, uh, yeah, and here we go. Thump, 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 thump. Steve groaned as he opened his eyes. He was on his side, hugging the toilet. One arm had gone numb and was stuck to the linoleum floor tiles. His vision took a second or two to stop drifting. In the interim, he tried to figure out what the hellish banging was. Then he heard grunts and moans. It was the unmistakable sound of a headboard slamming against a thin partition wall. Great, that's just what I need. His voice was little more than a hoarse croak as he tried to sit up. The stench of his bile in the bowl nearly made him purge once again. Flailing his numb arm, he grabbed the flush and pulled it. What the hell? Just for a second, before the water washed it away, he was certain that he saw glowing chunks in among the vomitus. Shaking his head and screwing up his eyes, he figured it was just the effect of broken blood vessels playing tricks on him. Colours popped like fireworks on the inside of his eyelids. It was like he's looking up at the stars through a kaleidoscope or Kisto Healy's goggles. Opening his eyes again, Steve gripped the wash basin and hauled himself upright. The man looking back at him from the smeared and cracked mirror looked about 20 years older than he was and had eyes like the befuddled domino players from downstairs, all bulbous and glassy. In short, 
He looked like freshly microwaved death. After spitting and rinsing his mouth out, Steve splashed his face with ice cold water and slapped his cheeks to try and get some colour back into them. Straight at his back, almost had him stumbling into the mildewed shower cubicle, so he grabbed the door frame and pulled himself out of the bathroom. Praying that his feet could handle momentum, he glided towards the bed and landed face down in a starfish position. Thump, thump, thump. The pounding was worse in here. To add to Steve's discomfort, Jack and Susan's bed was evidently up against the same wall as his. Every thrust sent vibrations through the frame and set the springs reverberating. Oh, for the love of God, give it a rest, Jack. He grumbled as he grabbed the pillow and pulled it over his head. As soon as his eyes closed, the multifaceted Starfield returned with a vengeance. His vision seemed to hurtle forward like he was some kind of space bug. It was dizzying at first, but after a while it became kind of soothing. The buzzing still filled his ears and actually became something of a blessing. By focusing on the almost imperceptible peaks and troughs in peak pitch and tone, he succeeded in completely blocking out the rhythmic sounds of drunken Rumpy Pumpy from the adjacent room. For the first time that day, Steve felt strangely at peace. Oh my God, help! A strangled cry shook him from his inebriated reverie, launching his pillow across the room and knocking the bowl of pot puree off the dresser all, all over the floor. He got up on his hands and knees and pressed his ear to the wall. A glance at the clock told him that he'd been lying there for over half an hour. All he could hear was the sound of running water and a strange gurgling sound. Balling his fist, Steve banged on the wall. Hey, you guys all right in there? Nobody answered, but the gurgling got louder. Jack, Susan, what the hell's going on in there? Again, there was no answer, but he could hear heavy shambling footsteps getting closer to the wall. Oi, what the fuck? Bang! Somebody belted the wall right where Steve had placed his ear. The shock of the blow made him jump, twist and fall off the side of the bed. Sitting on his backside, staring at the spot, he started to hear a strange kind of wheezing. It was a cross between breathing and the buzzing of a giant fly. What the hell is going on? He whispered to himself as he scrambled to his feet and slipped his shoes back on. The noise was followed by the sound of a door opening and low muttering. Steve grabbed his pint glass as a weapon and edged to the door. Peeping through the spy hole, he was slightly reassured to see the landlady standing outside Susan and Jack's room with a first aid kit. Deciding that he wanted to see if he could help, he grabbed the door handle and pulled it. Nothing. Taking the key off the side, he tried to slip it into the lock, but couldn't. Bending down, he looked through the keyhole. The door was locked from the other side and the key was in the lock. Hey! He banged on the door. Why is this door locked? Stay in your room, sir. The unmistakable voice of the big man growled. Looking again through the spy hole, he saw that the landlady had gone, and in her place was her husband, holding a shotgun. Righty-ho, I will leave it there. If you want to know what happens next in this nightmare, <laughs> and it, it is a bit of a nightmare, uh, <laughs> let's just say it goes downhill from there. Uh, yes, so... Excellent. I will now bring back our lovely guests. So first, you've been sitting there patiently, no doubt, <laughs> no doubt, no <laughs> doubt. You might have lip wanted to get in on the on the old, uh, you know, oh, on all the camera. Pretty yeah. definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> few comments uh, have been like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Careful, I have to get that. I have to get the warning out again. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yep. And uh, next we have. That's Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't expecting that. That's brilliant. <laughs> I had to rescue it from the dog. Oh, oh no, I don't know. I just, you know, I thought you were giving it a hug or something. You know. Oh, no. <laughs> The soothing skeleton. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> your comforter skeleton. I like it. Okay, Rhiannon. Hello. Hello. <laughs> and Captain Goggles himself. Here he is. Keystone and Lindsay. <laughs> Mid swig. <laughs> yeah, I'm running out of my second glass of whisk. 
It's not good. <laughs> no, God, he's off. Oh god! Oh god! He's getting Two. keystoned. I, 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 I have become a verb now. Uh, yes. Yeah, you become a verb, mate. It, it's only for launches. It's becoming keystoned. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, been, that was. <laughs> uh, okay, well done, done, everyone. By the way, <laughs> there's a lot of talk about the rumpy pumpy here. <laughs> so it's very it, it's not very often we uh we use such an english phrase for sex <laughs> i do all the time <laughs> i want to well it's, i've made it my personal mission to get all like phrases like rumpy pumpy and nooky back into the lexicon when, when I first met you, Tim, I seriously, you, I mean, I wish I could bring my family in here. I was like, I have no idea what he's saying. <laughs> English. Oh, Jen, but I don't know what any of it means. It's an entirely <laughs> different language. Honestly, Jen, Jen and um, all of the girls that I met at, at uh, WPC, where, it's where I met a lot of them, and then they led me down darker paths into getting published, um, and which led me to being here. Um, that they because they're all American. Look at that, because they're all American, and we have regular arguments about how certain things are said. Like squirrel, it's not squirrel. It's, no, it's squirrel. 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 It's not a squirrel. It's a squirrel. <laughs> and, <laughs> and this, and honestly, they, they will ask me, "What the hell did you just say?" It's like, don't don't ask me what I just said. You apparently speak goddamn English. Don't fuck with the English person Aww. that lives in England, so. <laughs> I think you're fucking with us. <laughs> I uh, like Wednesday. Wednesday. You guys are making like things Wednesday. up and you're like, yes. Yeah, like, well, you know. That's the thing, I'm seriously. I'm just here going, g'day, mate. G'day. <laughs> g'day. Seriously, though, uh, Tim would t talk, even in text, I'd read it and I'd be like, "Is that is that a word? Is that slang?" I think he's just making stuff up. He's just speaking. Didn't I have to explain yeah. what a pillock was? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Bell end, yeah. Tim. Have you bell had end. to explain? Yeah. Have you had to explain bell end to them yet? Yeah. Yes, I have. Yeah. Bell end. Bell end is my favorite for explaining to Americans. <laughs> <laughs> And then when they yeah. re work it out, they're like, oh, why did I not figure that out beforehand? It's like, yeah, really? <laughs> All right. You know, this, this anthology <laughs> from, from a discussion like this. So let's, uh, on this discussion, the next anthology is going to be the Rumpy Pumpy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so what is let's this? make We're the Rumpy Pumpy on. anthology. We're, we're now moving on like to the David, erotica side of David things. Bummer. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. It never takes you long, does it, Lindsay? Jesus. <laughs> no, we have Callum and I have just given up. We just know exactly where our conversation is going. <laughs> <laughs> Five seconds in and there's like a right turn straight oh, down God, the I'm, avenue. I'm, I'm hyperventilating. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> what did he have on his head? <laughs> Don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Ribs Chinky for your pleasure. Bad enough. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah. Hey, it's 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 like one that that <laughs> My kind of tally told me that. <laughs> it's not enough whiskey in the world. <laughs> <laughs> There's... Definitely that's really that's voice. really kind of weird because that's what somebody said like before we came on that we <laughs> looks like a band. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tell me this isn't a rock band for real, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. Nice. I think someone needs to name our rock band. Oh my god, Tim! Horror erotica ribs for her pleasure, Mitch. <laughs> I mean, I am down. I am down <laughs> for this. Put let's do my it. Name down. I am let's do down it. For yes. One yes. Day. I'm just the book that name. That's my boyfriend. That's the funniest thing he's ever said. I am doing Ribs this. Ribs I love it. I'm serious. Let's do it. I have got the story in hand. I am so down for the sequel. I'll, I'll turn something into more. <laughs> oh, I am, look at Tim's face. 
I am down for that. I'm so down for that. Come on, sexy vest. You know you want it. <laughs> steady, old son. steady on, old chap. <laughs> don't, don't get the old English out now, darling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Steady on, old chap. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, y'all, we speak American over here, okay? <laughs> Be grateful. I was saying to Callum earlier that I was reading my story out, like practicing, and every time I got to like Harry's parts, the the, su- the terrible Southern American accent was coming out. It was like, oh please God, don't 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 happen when I'm actually doing the reading because it would have been horrific. <laughs> wait wait wait. Demo well, it for I, I want to hear your I want to hear your Southern American accent. Yeah, we got to hear Oh, I, I assume it's Southern. I have no idea if it is, but I might do an audio book. <laughs> I think it's what? Southern American. I'll do an audio reading and I'll send it to Tim and then he can decide how horrendous it actually is and do with it as he will. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Yeah. Wednesday in the Adams. I like that. We could bring the bloopers. Yeah, I like Wednesday in the Adams. Yeah, I, like the, uh... the Adams yeah, yeah. I can do with that. <clears throat> yeah, we could put in the bloopers for the showcase thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Uh, at least a few of us are actual musicians. Mm-hmm. Uh, I am yeah, in the loose sense right. of the word. I'm a singer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they went up practice. I'll hang out in the back and play the triangle. Yeah. <laughs> 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 David. Yeah. <laughs> David, you kill me, man. Hi. <laughs> So, does hey, anybody actually have look. any actual questions, Hi. or are we just going to talk? <laughs> yeah, we're just going to sit here and talk all day, man. I'm just trying to get a little thing going, going on here, man. I don't know what y'all are talking about. What is happening? I hope that's not what she's doing. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's... Uh, <laughs> no, man. Man, that's not cool, man. You just don't, don't take me up and make me don't we disappear help. and whatnot and show, man. North Carolina, <laughs> hey, yeah. <laughs> How does it get more American? How does an American get more American? I... <laughs> <laughs> That's Southern, man. That's Southern. Oh, God. Uh, I thought my American accent was bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear Lord. <laughs> oh, yeah, so, right. <laughs> <laughs> Those questions, though. No, 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 no. <laughs> right, right. I'm moving on, moving on. So, yeah, um, <clears throat> so basically, oh, I'm just going to basically ask, is everybody here the cook in the house or not? Callum? What, just sorry, say that again? Are you the cook in the house? I nearly yeah, said something else. Yeah, I nearly <laughs> had a problem. <laughs> I love cooking, so we're is very that happy. an all, Tim? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so you're the cook then. So what, what's sort of your favourite sort of thing to do? So I love Indian food, but then I also love uh, like proper, like, like the recipe in this book, the yeah. um, pea soup and scouse and stuff like that, like good good comfort proper. food stuff. Yeah, proper stuff, mate. Yeah, But yeah. like treat food is like a good bit of Indian. Always yeah. nice. Oh yeah, can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. I'm very similar. I'm very similar to you on that. It's just like I think it's, a, it's because of where we're from, the sort of northwest. It's mm. also, you know, <laughs> yeah, you can't beat a good kind of scouse. Yeah, scouse and hot pots and stuff mm. like that. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so, Neen, you've already said that you're not the. Um... I, I am the cook in the house, but it ain't <laughs> <laughs> like that. <laughs> It's we have a very just plain palette basically. It's whatever I can quickly put together between the four year old showing me something and the four year old demanding something else. So yeah. yeah, it's not really the cooking. I used to cook quite a bit, but yeah, once once he's a bit older and I can actually spend time in the kitchen, uh, hopefully yeah, I'll yeah, get yeah. back to it. <laughs> yeah. So you only have turkey dinosaurs and things like that at the minute. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta love a good old turkey dinosaur. Oh you? yeah! <laughs> Isn't it a turkey kangaroo out in Australia or something? <laughs> Do they have turkey dinosaurs? Is it turkey dinosaurs or is it, or is it even is it even turkey? Is it kangaroo dinosaurs or something? <laughs> you know, it's like <laughs> frozen kangaroo bits. <laughs> It, it There's a market food. in that. I'm fair. You see the, the green is a tournament. See, kangaroo, kangaroo nugget things. They just made a kangaroo meat and it looks I am like not, a kangaroo. Look at Callum's face. Um, <laughs> let's not talk about a kangaroo's nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hey, it's fucking out of celebrity now. Can you mind how the gutter pays? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm one of the one of the cooks in my house. It, it's funny because um, I I put so much into cooking that my family is like, you know, when I cook, they're like, oh, I love this. It's like it's like we live in a restaurant. It's amazing. But then they're like, sometimes we just want simple food. We just want you know, <laughs> like uh, chicken nuggets or hot dogs or something. Oh, so, no. Grandma. Uh, cooks we split the days and grandma cooks sometimes so we can have both you know we can have the simple the macaroni and cheese and the chicken nuggets and the, and the kangaroo <laughs> hot pockets no, not here. But, uh, down for the hot pockets and then the days when uh you know we can have the other stuff it's it, it it's a good balance it's nice it works out good <laughs> Sorry, my brain's melted. I think so wait, did like... y'all did y'all miss the question? If the authors were all turned into a burger, who would be the tastiest burger? <laughs> I mean, uh, I, I we'll kind of want to go with that next. Right now, can can I feel like you're keeping though? Who's doing this? I'm not sure that. that Fine, you fine, really? fine. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the button. <laughs> no, over to you, Rhiannon. Uh, I, know, I know you're a bit of a foodie, so is it? Uh, are yeah. You cook? Are we? Wait, are we talking about who would be the best burger? Because it's not. Not me. yet. No, no, no. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> um, no, I'm just jealous because my milkshakes bring all the boys to the yard. Tim's Never mind. Face. Carry on. Tim's face. <laughs> <laughs> Tim's found the mute on, button. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I am like the fifty percent cook, um, yeah. so I work full time nine to five, and my mom works part time. So on the days when she is home, she'll cook, and then on the days that she's working, I cook. Yeah. Uh, but I am like the resident baker of my household. Mm -hmm. I'm the one who bakes all of the goodies and tries to make us all fat and diabetic. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> We're getting there. Yeah. Lindsay? She I, I mean... <laughs> Oh no, yeah, she's frozen. Uh, <laughs> that was happening. Um, now, my, my husband's a really good cook, but it tends to be me just based on the fact that I work from home permanently. So um, my, my poor husband, bless him, is now back in an office. So he's he travels home about sort of high five, six o'clock. So if we were waiting for him to cook, it yeah. would be like really, really like so. Um, I tend to cook. He's a really, really good. I mean, when we first got together, he tended to do all the cooking, and then it sort of became me. We do a lot of Hello Fresh because you know we both have day jobs. Who wants one of them? Um, but I mean, <laughs> who wants a fucking day job? Um, but I love, I love cooking. I mean, like I said before, I love cooking Japanese. If I can learn to do a Japanese dish, that's me done. I, I love to do things from scratch. So like mm. barbecue. Like I've got jars of sauces downstairs, teriyaki, barbecue, whatever. I make my own pizzas. On a, we have Friday night is pizza night, except tonight because obviously I'm not watching films with my husband tonight because of this. So it was like, right, okay, we'll have a hell of fresh tonight. Then we're not having Friday night pizza tonight. tonight. We'll have to throw that out of the fucking window for once. But normally, it's <laughs> that out the window. We'll it's not the same that. on a Saturday. No, well, but we're doing it tomorrow anyway, out of sheer protest, if nothing. Else. Because, I, but the problem is that now that I've we've started making our own pizza, so I make the dough and he like puts he makes the sauce. I mean, it takes five seconds, but it's a really good sauce and like he makes the like puts the pizzas together. But now that we've done that, store bought and takeaway are all shit. <laughs> it's all shit, and then we'll buy it, and it's like, why have I spent thirty to forty quid on this piece of horse shit when I could have gone downstairs, made the dough in ten minutes? And it tastes so much better than this. And we've ruined ourselves, like ruined pizza for ourselves for all this of is, the eternity. This <laughs> is Lindsay, kind of my life. You made, you made me realise I make sushi quite regularly. 
Oh, Ooh, that's the next on my go. list. If, if I can find some f proper, proper, fr that's the one thing I haven't done Japanese wise because I want to find like a decent fish supplier so that I'm not going to poison us both. You know, <laughs> I, 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 I don't, I, I, I'm, I'm paranoid about that. I can do every like cook dishes, I'm fine, but the, the raw fish thing, I'm like, mm, not quite sure. Just buying salmon mm. out of a sea mm. market is quite the right sort of fish, is it? Yeah. But, what you know, need? Ah, oh, hi. I like what's it. Oh, honestly, yeah. there is nothing. There is nothing Japanese-wise that I don't like. I've tried it all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Love, those love are, one of my my favourite things is that them is the wasabi peas. I love, oh, I love, oh. I love them. and then the pain love. that comes with them. It's like why? It's like that place. Yeah. It's you like know, BDSM with food, isn't it? Let's be honest. Yeah. <laughs> because the great thing about wasabi, like, I mean, I'm. <laughs> I'm it's big into hot cool. sauce and spice and everything anyway, <laughs> yeah. but the great thing about mm. wasabi and Chinese mustard and all the Asian spice <laughs> is you feel it in like your nose and your sinuses, not in your throat and your chest. That's the that's the great yeah. thing about it, I feel I like. Mean, it, you can I mean, if you yeah, have a big was... bit of it, it <laughs> fucking hurts. Like we're, we're, yeah. we're going to London, so we travel down to London on Sunday to go see my little, because my little brother lives down there, so we're away for a week with my parents. And they've got so many Japanese restaurants. I'm just going to pretend I'm in Japan for a week and I'm just going to ignore all the stupid, ignorant English people that are in London. <laughs> just pretend I'm in Japan because I can't leave this bastard country because of fucking COVID. So I'm going to pretend I'm in Japan, go to all of my favorite Japanese restaurants and just pretend I'm not in England. So <laughs> I'd, like to, week. I'd like to address a couple of things from the comments here. Uh, <laughs> one, one is uh, Sharon keeps talking about BAPs. What are BAPs? Oh, <laughs> they like burger buns. Oh god, we're having to translate to the American already. It's <laughs> no, uh, meaning as well. No, it's well, I mean, all really, seriously, I have no, no idea. Oh, burger buns. What are the <laughs> What? Buns. Boom also, or also buns. buns. Sesame seed buns. Oh, yeah, bun. Like a burger bun or a bun. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Okay, he's got I it. Vote he's got it. He's got it. He's got it. Right, yes, we're going to England. Right, the let's problem move is, on. Uh, over in let's Canada, move quickly. buns don't mean boobs; they mean butts. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. So they're that's entirely that's different. Buns are butt cheeks. Yeah, uh, pretty butt cheeks. Yeah. The way she's talking about it, it probably works. <laughs> Which I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, I'm good with me in between. That's pair questionable of at the best of times. <laughs> let's be honest. I, I mean, if, you, if we want the Harry <laughs> Potter, let's, let's, let's just, just go. Callum's gone. Callum's gone. <laughs> the hor horror erotica is ruined. Callum's left. <laughs> no, no, no. Right. Come back. Just, anyway, anyway, That's anyway. That's happening. Right. That is happening. We're gonna have to stop I'm wrapping this plotting. up now. Okay, wait, wait. Stop wrapping Kurt, this up. So, Kurt let's has another go. question. Callum, were you okay? No, Callum, Keystone, were you belt up a minute while I was answering the question? <laughs> so we're going to go with with Kurt's question. It's uh, if all the Earth authors were turned into a burger, who would who would the tastiest burger be? Well, what would you be if you were a burger? Now I reckon I'd probably be something with tentacles in it. Uh, yeah, you're, you'd be an octopus burger. burger. Let's go with burger. 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 If anything, uh, yeah, an octopus burger, Callum. I'd probably be a, a lovely um, bean burger. <laughs> spicy. You'd be a spicy bean burger because you're so full of sass. So full of fucking sass. You have to be a spicy bean burger. Yeah, I'm sorry. Spicy bean burger. <laughs> <laughs> right. Mean? I'd be a cat burger. Cat? <laughs> oh, God. I just the eyes. The eyes no. from, like, every screen. That was brilliant. <laughs> Controversy. <laughs> I'd say I'd be like a like a jalapeno yeah, and pimento cheeseburger. Cool. Nice. <laughs> I, like I like it. Yeah. Uh, Rhiannon. Mac and cheeseburger with Canadian bacon. Mm. Oh, good. That's, call. that's tight. Nice. Yeah. Good call, Lindsay. Uh, probably Wagyu beef with. Uh... What beef? Did with you say wagyu, wagyu. That's wagyu. Wagyu. So, fancy. so really like rich Easter Japanese meat. beef with cheese yeah, yeah. and okay. high nose. Because mm. I like a bit of spice. It's like their version of an Aberdeen, of an Aberdeen Angus, mate. 
Yeah. Oh, oh, but him, I've had it, and it like when you're paying three hundred quid for this piece of steak that's like this big. Yeah. Oh, it's worth it though. Five, look at what that big. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, the, the appetites of my husband, who is like the bottomless pit of you know Yorkshire, yeah, like then me, myself, you know, who won't eat anything. But you eat this, and it's like, okay, there's a lot of fat in there. I really have a whole lot because I'm going to die of like a cardiac if I have like my normal size steak. Would. Yeah. You would die. I was referring to Kurt's other question, though. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, this last quite This is going to be the last question for the evening. Uh, I'm going to do the prize draw in a second. Oh Jesus uh, Christ! Orphans, <laughs> if you had to live your life as an item of food, but you still had arms and legs. Fuck knows. <laughs> random, random here. Does anybody remember the tofu mode for Resident Evil? No. <laughs> There was no! a mode you unlocked on one of them where you were a big, big wedge of tofu running around. Oh, record. I love it! In Resident Evil? Yeah. yeah. Resident Evil 4, I think it was, the first time they did it. They've done it in a couple of them now. It's an unlockable... You know they have silly unlockable modes once you finish it the first time? Yeah, this tofu uh, mode. Yeah. Somehow where you go I around as a giant piece of tofu. I've, I've so missed this, and I, I'm I can't dying. wait to see the new Resident Evil. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, my answer is going to have to be a sausage, in it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Shocker. Yeah. A brat burst. There we go. There you go. Oh yeah. Got it. Got to yeah, get yeah, brat and burst. Sausage, Tim. Come on. Exactly. Callum. <laughs> oh, I may as well be a uh, lovely pair of buns. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. What I... was that? I didn't hear you. Buns. I thought you were going to go with faggots, personally, then. No, no, <laughs> just, be, no, <laughs> just be really controversial. I don't like to overuse a joke. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my comment section is getting kinky as fuck. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know. I mean, you're just ignoring it for a moment. Yeah, I know. The is really it, there honestly. now. Oh, my God. <laughs> I will love all of you in time. <laughs> oh, oh I, I can see where, yeah, the scouse is coming out in your husband now, Catelyn. Told you. He's getting more scouse. Than the scouse is showing. Put it away. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> what sort of food would you be? Me? Oh, what? Huh? Yep. Yes. <laughs> I can live your life as a food. What food? <laughs> she be. Coffee, clearly, because she's yeah. not with it. Very early with she Chocolate covered coffee bean. Oh, that's good. I like, like that. I like that. Like that's I don't think you'd live very long though. I would I eat just, you. <laughs> I just Keystone. Oh man, what would I be? Um I think I, I I'm gonna go with a uh a garlic dill pickle. Nice, okay. nice. I do. I am partial to one of those. I must admit. Yep, Lindsay. I bet you are. Um... Yeah. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Tim. Um, I would be. I would be. It's chaos. We knew it was. Let's be honest. When we saw our yeah. chat, when we first started our chat the other day, we knew where this was going. Let's be honest. I think I'd be cheese. I mean, if you ask my family, I'm cheese mad, so it'd be cheese of some description. Cheese. I'm cheese. Cheese, <laughs> cheese fiend. Yeah, I was going to say a taco, and then I checked the comment section, and I don't think I'm going to add more euphemisms to it. So now <laughs> I'm going to go with ice cream cone. Do it, do it, do it. You know what you are. <laughs> Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. We're all doomed at this point. You might as well just join the masks. Yeah. So, um, hard shell or soft shell? Ooh, good question. <laughs> you take the hard shell and you wrap the soft shell around there you it. Go. So when it breaks uh, and collapses mm -hmm. on you, you've got support still. All right. So that's why we turn ours Ooh, into nachos like when we have tacos. We just crush them. Yeah. 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 I ain't bothering with actual tacos. We just crush the fuckers and just be done with it. Righty ho, prize draw time. Okay, so we've got the octopus pot. So we're going to give away two copies. Uh, first one is going to go to Deborah Groom. There we go. Yep. Congrats. There we go. Golf clap. 
Golf clap. <laughs> <laughs> the clap you so richly deserve. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer Hadfield. Yay! Yay! There's our Jen. <laughs> excellent, excellent, excellent. Right, well, that brings us to the end of this. Uh, if you want to get hold of a copy, there are links buried under a mountain of innuendo. Uh, <laughs> or, you can, or you can just follow the thing here, which is getbook.app forward slash death underscore. Oh, Would you have a book? <laughs> I, yeah, the book. It was a book in this? <laughs> was it? Really? Who doesn't want a book written by this crew? Come on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. So thank you. Thank you all for coming on. Uh, and uh, it's been a really good laugh. Uh, and thank everybody at home for watching. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, tune in on Sunday. Tune in on Sunday for more, like, filth in the comment section, because we will probably be watching live, so it probably will just go off on one. Uh, and... <laughs> <laughs> Callum. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, well, we've, we've got the showcase that I've been putting together. So, yep, tune in for that. And thank you all for watching, folks. I'm going to leave you, you on all. the. I'm going to leave you on the funky. Uh, what was he doing? Um, <laughs> oh, get you, get you. I'm going to leave you on the the trailer. And yeah, wave goodbye, everybody. <laughs> bye bye. 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 Thank you.